Alright, here we are in 6.3, the next section of chapter 6, <clears throat> and it's all about the nucleus and DNA uh, and how the DNA is used to make proteins using ribosomes. So, uh, let's just jump right in. Uh, so, uh, the nucleus is an organelle that we've talked about quite a bit already, uh, so you should be pretty familiar with it. Um, it's a nucleus that contains most of a cell's uh, genetic material, most of the cell's genes. Uh, there is some genetic material in mitochondria as well as in chloroplasts, um, but the majority of a cell's uh, genetic material is in the nucleus. And the nucleus is a wonderful uh, organelle that has a double membrane around it. Um, so you might be able to see that in this diagram. So that means as it has uh, a membrane that has two layers, and we call that the nuclear envelope. Funny name. And in this nuclear envelope, it has these pores, nuclear pores, um, and those are really important to allow materials to enter and to leave the nucleus, specifically leave when we're talking about uh, messenger RNA as well as ribosomes, because both of those are made in the nucleus. And the shape of the nucleus is maintained by something called the nuclear lamina, which is this kind of like protein mesh uh, structure that gives a that not only protects the nucleus from um, any harm, but also gives its shape and kind of support. Uh, so make sure you take a good look at these diagrams. There's This is a great uh, TEM image of a nucleus. Uh, here you have a nice close-up image of the, the nuclear pore, so you can see that there are quite a few of them. Uh, these are, you know, uh, drawings of the same uh, images that show the nucleus here, and you can see that there's kind of like a kind of darker center or another part of the nucleus that we refer to as the nucleolus. A nucleus might have one nucleolus or many nucleoli, another great word. Um, we have the chromatin, which I'll explain on the next slide what that is, but that's essentially your genetic material. And you also notice that the nucleus is closely affiliated with the endoplasmic reticulum. And specifically here, it's a rough endoplasmic reticulum, but the, the smooth would be close by as well. So, moving along, chromatin and chromosomes. So, chromatin is a word that we use to describe DNA and its associated proteins. Because when we talk about uh, the genetic material in eukaryotic cells, it's not that the DNA is just kind of like crumpled up in there in like any random way. It's actually organized pretty well um, pretty carefully around specific proteins that we call histone proteins. Um, and the so those proteins, I don't have a great diagram of this, but I should get one. Um, these proteins uh, in pairs of fours, the DNA is kind of like wrapped around it um, and it kind of compacts the DNA that way uh, so that it's protected um, and it can easily be uh, moved around if it needs to be. Um, and so chromosomes are a time when the DNA is especially kind of compacted. The DNA is not always kind of like scrunched up, but when you think about chromosomes, that's when the chromatin is kind of coiled, coiled around these proteins in a very like compact sort of way, and we refer to this process as condensing. And chromosomes are just one, a, one chromosome is one long molecule of DNA. <clears throat> and different organisms have a specific number of chromosomes. So for example, humans have 46 chromosomes or 20, 23 pairs. So you get 23 chromosomes from biological father, 23 chromosomes from biological mother to make a total of 46. Frogs, on the other hand, um, have much fewer chromosomes and different organisms have different amounts. Um, and the other thing that you should know is that, so when you have your nucleus, uh, you have the chromosome, or the chromatin, that may be condensed into chromosomes, but then you also have your nucleolus, one or more uh, nucleoli. And in the nucleolus, um, there is uh, DNA that's used to make ribosomal RNA uh, to make ribosomes. So these ribosomes are then used to make protein. So inside of the nucleus, you have your ribosomal RNA, you have, you know, ribosomes that are being made, the proteins that are needed to make that, as well as the DNA that is the instructions for making those. So here we have a diagram of chromatin to kind of clarify what exactly we're talking about when we talk about chromatin. 
Um, so you have your DNA, right, as a strand, and that is wound around these protein kind of bead uh, structures, and those are packed up even closer together, um, <clears throat> and those will continue kind of like to, to pack up and to pack up closer and scrunch together, and so when a chromosome condenses, this chromatin, which is this protein and DNA complex, will kind of wind up and pack up, and then you will see the um, chromosome in this kind of like clearer state. Uh, but that only happens during mitosis. Uh, otherwise, the chromosomes are not condensed and they're not kind of in this uh, scrunched up shape. So that's uh, chromatin and DNA. Uh, and then we have ribosomes. So in the central dogma of uh, biology, the idea is that you have um, DNA, which is the instructions for making mRNA, and then that mRNA is used, um, or that copy of DNA. So DNA is the instructions, mRNA is your copy of the DNA, and then that's used by ribosomes to make proteins. Um, and so ribosomes are what we refer to as protein factories. They are the tools that build uh, your proteins, and they use the instructions from the DNA. And we'll get into this kind of process in detail, but DNA to RNA is a process that we call transcription because it's making a kind of like a single stranded copy. And then RNA to protein is when you translate the genetic material into a sequence of amino acids, which is then made into proteins. And ribosomes are the, the instruments that do that. Um, and ribosomes are made out of ribosomal RNA, also called rRNA. And like I said, their function is protein synthesis, and ribosomes can be found in prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. However, in eukaryotic cells, so like your cells or any animal cells or plant or fungi or what have you, um, they can either be found freely floating around in the cytosol. So like in this diagram, or sorry, in this photo here, uh, these kind of long lines are part of the endoplasmic reticulum. And then these kind of darker dots are individual free floating ribosomes. Those ribosomes that are free floating generally make proteins for that cell, <clears throat> to be used by that cell. But there are also some ribosomes that you can kind of see that are bound to the edge of the endoplasmic reticulum. So they're actually stuck to the endoplasmic reticulum. Um, so they're bound to it. And those, those ribosomes generally make proteins for secretion or export. Um, and there's quite a bit of them. Uh, and so when we look at a ribosome, they are made up of two subunits. You have a large subunit and you have the small subunit. And so in this ribosome, there's kind of like a channel between those subunits. And so the mRNA, that single strand copy of DNA, feeds into the ribosomal, uh, kind of like this, this pathway. And protein or amino acids are assembled and eventually they will turn into a protein as they're coming out. So that's kind of like your ribosome factory. <clears throat> and I think we're going to get into this in much more detail, like the whole process of protein synthesis, but you should know that ribosomes are these protein factories, that they are the organelles or the structures that make protein. Uh, so that's kind of all that I want to say for this section. Uh, let's do some practice questions. Uh, so your first practice question is, what is the role of ribosomes in carrying out genetic instructions? Uh, so take a moment to answer that, and I will write my answer now. So in the central dogma of biology, DNA are the instructions. Those are the genetic instructions that tell exactly what proteins should be made and how. And so through the pro oh, yeah, that's not the line. through the process of uh, transcription. DNA is used to make 
uh, messenger RNA, <clears throat> which is sort of like a single-stranded copy of the DNA. This is not the best drawing I've ever made, but it's good enough. Right. And then the ribosomes read what information is on the messenger RNA, and they make proteins. Right, and that process, like I said before, is called translation. So you have your ribosome, large subunit, small subunit, and then it's turning that information, reading those instructions to make a protein. Next practice question. Um, what is the molecular composition of the nuclei, or sorry, not nucleolus, and explain its function? So take a moment to answer that question. So you'll remember the nucleolus is in the nucleus. It's the site of um, ribosome synthesis. So it's where ribosomal RNA is made into ribosomes. And in order to do that, you need to have proteins. These proteins will help build it. You also need to have DNA, which is the instructions. Uh, for making uh, the ribosomes. I need to work on my handwriting. This is kind of bad. Uh, anyways, in the meantime, last practice question. So, if you have a cell, and it's beginning the process of dividing, because when cells divide, you have one cell, and then eventually it will split into two cells, right? Um, the chromatin begins to condense, so it begins to pack up. The question asks, does this mean that the number of chromosomes will change during this process? So take a moment to think about that and write an answer. Um, so hopefully you've gotten some kind of an answer. Uh, what you should have realized is that the, uh, the number of chromosomes does not change. Um, during the condensation process because whatever amount of DNA you have, you, you already have, and the cell has probably made a copy of it uh, so that it has an extra copy, but then it will still condense it, and that's just a process of packing it closer together, sort of like if you're going on a trip, you want to pack up all your clothes into a bag so it's not like flying around everywhere and not losing any pieces, and that's essentially what's happening when the DNA is condensing. The cell is packing it all together to make sure nothing gets lost, nothing gets damaged in the process of division. So it's not increasing or decreasing the number of chromosomes, it's just like compacting it so it's easier to move about without any problems. So that's all for now. Um, I will see you guys again for uh, the next podcast.